In this video, we're going to go over class-based views, and in particular, we're going to go over converting function-based views over to generic class-based views. It's a fairly simple process if you understand class-based views. There are already a few videos up on them, but we're going to do a basic introduction as we convert our basic function-based views into class-based views. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a blog application. If we'll actually run it and open up our browser, we'll see that we have a what's called class-based view demo blog and we're basically just going to click around a little bit and we're going to notice that it has its normal blog we can go directly to a blog post we can sort by users we can sort by categories and then we can also go to multiple pages as well if we'll get out of this and we'll jump into our code we'll open up our blog slash views and you can notice we have function based views and there's actually a lot of boilerplate in each of these if we look at our index view specifically we can see we're getting categories. We're getting those so we can display those in the sidebar. We're setting up a paginator using the Django Core Paginator class. We're paginating by five. Then we're getting our page number that we have in our query string. Setting up a page object and then finally we're setting posts to our object list of our paginator. I have also a video on pagination and I'll link to that in the show notes. And then finally at the bottom we have our render where we're sending in our request, our template, and our context data. And that's actually the same thing we have in user post and category as well, except in each of those we're doing a slightly modified filter for post objects, one to get usernames, and then one to get all the posts based on categories. And then at the bottom we have our single detail view for a blog post. It's getting our template blog slash detail. It's getting all of our categories like everywhere else. It's getting a single post if that doesn't exist it's kind of 404 finally we're returning a we're doing a render and using sending in our context data so that's all fairly basic we see that in a lot of places so that's a good place to start when looking at converting function based views to class based views there's actually a number of things that will be cleaned away when we start doing when we start doing the conversion First thing we need to do is we're going to import our list view and our detail view from Django Views Generic. And then we'll start with our index view since it's probably the simplest. We're going to create a new list view. This is a view that will list all of our objects out of whatever object we want to get it. We're going to name it index view. And then give it our template of blog slash index like we do below. Set the model to post. And it's going to have a default query string of post.objects.all. So we would control the sort order and all of that in our model. Finally, we're going to set our context object name to post so our templates work the exact same. We're also not going to need to do much for pagination. We just need to set the paginate by property so that we know to paginate all of our pages by five. I actually have everything named similar in the templates. So there is a page object that the class based view is going to send that does our pagination. It also is going to set posts as that paginated amount as well. So the templates don't need to be converted at all. In your situation, you might need to go ahead and do that. But to save time, I went ahead and set those up as the same name. But it's still general boilerplate code that you would need anyway. So moving on, we need to open up our URLs and import our new index view. And then replace index with index view dot as view. Stat as view is returning a function into this so that it still actually works exactly like a function based view except it's actually a class in its initial state. So let's go ahead and exit out of this and run it and then look in our browser. If we we'll refresh the page we can see it still works but there's no categories on the side. We can still do paging and go back and forward and everything works. So let's quickly make categories work go back into our views page we'll go down to our index view and put in get context data method then we're going to update our super call so that it uses index view and then we're going to add extra context data of categories and do category.objects.all let's jump back into our browser refresh the page and there it is so what we've done is we've overridden the get context data method so that we can add extra data to our views. So that dictionary you would normally build in function based views you can build up extra over by overriding the get context data. It actually already has initial data 
but you can add to it. Let's go ahead and delete the function based view since we don't need it anymore. So next we'll move on to our user post view. If we'll take a look at it, we're going to accept a username so that we can actually sort everything by the username. It gets the username from our URLs. We're going to handle that in our class based view. This view is also going to be a list view and it's going to be almost an exact duplicate of index view. So we'll just go ahead and copy paste and I'll tweak it. So now we have our user posts view. All the properties are the exact same and I modified the get context super call to be just right. So now we're going to set get query set. Now we're going to override the method get query set so that we can modify our query set to return exactly what we want. The general best practices is to do QS for query set, call the super first, so you get your base query set, which in this case would be a post.objects.all. On the next line, we're going to get the user object so that we can actually filter it out. So we're going to do a get object or 404. You're going to use the user object, and then we're going to do username equals. We're going to do self.quargs.get username. What this is doing is set self.quargs in the dispatch to be set to whatever is passed in with the URL. So that username in URL is passed in and set in self.quargs, so we just need to yank it out and use it. Now that we have our user object, we can proceed with our query set. We're going to just return a new query set, except we're going to filter and get all of the results where the author is equal to the user that we just got. So with that in mind, we're going to just go ahead and delete our user post function based view. We need to add user post view to our URLs, converting user post to our class based view of it. And then let's go ahead and run it and then jump in our browser and take a look. Go ahead and click on our user. It filters by that. Go back and click on our other user and it filters by that one as well. So now our user post is working the same. So jumping back in code, we have one more list view to convert. Since it too is fairly similar to the user posts, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing and then just explain it to you there. And the only thing we modify in this case is the get query set. Here we're going to do the super call to get our base query set. Then we're going to get our category uh, from our slug. Again, slug is in our URL. So now that we have our category, we're just going to do a filter on our query set to only return posts that have categories equal to the category in our URL. So with that in mind, went ahead and took care of the URL. So Let's just go ahead and jump into our browser and refresh the page. Now we can click on categories and there we go. They work. So we have one final view to take care of and that is just the general plain post. And this is a simple and easy one to do. We're going to create a detail view. We're going to call it post view. Set the template to blog slash detail, the model to post, and the context object name to post go ahead and delete the rest and that's it for our post view. What's going to happen is it's going to take the slug that we're passing into our URL and it's going to find the correct post in our model based on that slug. The class based view by default checks for the primary key if that is one of the query arguments in the URL or the slug if that's one of the query arguments in the URL and finds the appropriate record for it and returns it. And then finally, since we're going to have the sidebar, we need to override our get context data method so that we can add it in, so that we can see the categories in our side view. And with that, we'll jump over to our URLs. We have one final one to take care of, that's the post view. We'll remove it and add post view in there. And then we're going to also delete our blog.views since we're no longer using function based views. It kind of doesn't serve any purpose, so I like to go ahead and remove it. So now let's run the server and jump into the browser and click around. Everything seems to work just fine like we expect. There's paging, there's categories, there's users. So the last thing to really look at is the fact that our views page is really long and by overriding get context data in every single view, it really kind of defeats the benefit that we would see from doing class-based views of slimming up the code. If 
we override the same thing and add the same code in every single one, then what's the point in class-based views? In this instance, we're going to go ahead and create a mixin, and we're going to use inheritance to slim up our code. We're going to create a category mixin, and then we're going to add get context data like we have below. It's the exact same code. There's really no difference to it at all. To use a mixin, we're just going to add it as the first thing we inherit from in our index view and in all of the rest. To kind of get an idea of how awesome that these are, I'm going to go ahead and add the inheritance to each class-based view that we're using, and I'm going to remove get context data all at one time. And as you can see, it has slimmed up quite a bit. It has taken what all four of those views were on past the entire page of the video and slimmed it to where we can fit it all on one section of the area. And if you look at our index view at the top, all it is is a class-based view with property set, so you know exactly what's going on with it really fast. And you have your post view at the very bottom, and you know what's going on with it really quickly. And it makes testing a whole lot easier if you're going to write unit tests because you don't have a whole bunch of branches that you have to test in your view. You know exactly what's going to happen with post view since it's a detail view. You know that it's going to get a single object back and it's going to return it. It's going to use the right template name. And you know for that piece of data, post is going to be the value that you use in your template. So this is really, I think, where the power of class-based views comes in is in adding mix-ins for common functionality that you use all over the place that you would repeat or do a bunch of method calls and just do a series of method calls or you would string a whole bunch of functions together that string a bunch of method calls together or you would have all kinds of other hackery going on that I have seen in some projects. This I think really slims it down and makes it a little more understandable of what's going on once you understand class-based views. And really once you start to get to use them, they make a lot of sense. So with that we'll go ahead and look in our browser and everything still seems to work just fine. So with that, I think we're going to wrap up the video. I hope you have a little better idea of how to use class-based views more effectively and how to start the process of converting function-based views.